everybody and welcome back to the seesaw um a few months ago well, might have been last year who knows the way the time flies by i posted a video for an air fryer roast chicken uh using our ninja dual air fryer and it has been the most successful video by a very long way of any videos that we've ever posted and i know that when we first got our air fryer I searched on various social media looking for different recipes and ideas and ways to cook different things because the instruction books are great but if you can actually see that somebody has prepared the same thing that you've got sitting in front of you and the timings and temperatures they used it can be really helpful. So what I thought I'd do today is a quick little recipe video. I'm going to tonight make a roast gammon in the Ninja and just wanted to share how we prepare that for you. Now, first of all, for our American viewers, you might be wondering what a gammon is. So it is very similar to a ham, but essentially a gammon is a raw ham. So it usually has been smoked or brined, but it has not been cooked. So it is completely raw meat. Whereas um, a ham in the US has usually been cured and cooked in some way. And so you can buy raw ham, uh, large pieces of raw ham in the States. Often you find it around Thanksgiving and Christmas time, but it is available, especially if you have like a butcher or something like that close by you or, you, or specialty store, you might be able to find it. Um, otherwise, you could still do some of these steps with a ham joint but you would need to just do the kind of last part of cooking it in the Ninja rather than having to cook it all the way through. So essentially, once we've cooked the gammon, it becomes a ham. That's, that's the simplest way I can describe it. But I just thought I'd verify that because I know we have a lot of viewers in the States that might be wondering what's the difference. And that is the difference. This is a completely raw piece of meat. So what I'm going to do first of all is just boil it for 30 minutes. So I've got a large pan of water there. I'm going to turn that on, pop the gammon in there, not anything else, no seasoning or anything. I'm just going to put it in there and let it boil for 30 minutes. And that just starts the cooking process, but it also draws out some of the salt. So gammon is quite a salty because it has been, um, even the unsmoked, it's usually been brined and therefore it can hold quite a bit of salt. And so actually the boiling helps to draw that out. So it depends how I'm cooking it. If I'm going to cook it in the crock pot, like cook it all day, then I don't worry about boiling it first. But if I'm going to try and cook it faster um, or roast it, that sort of thing, then I would boil it first just to get some of that salt drawn out of it. And it just makes it... Um, but we don't particularly like things that are particularly salty in flavour. And so it just helps to balance that flavour out a little bit. So first step is to pop this in the pan of water and I'll let it boil for 30 minutes and then I'll come back and show you what we do next. Hi everybody, so as you can see that has now been cooking for 30 minutes, just boiling away. You get quite a lot of scum, that's from the salt that's in the gammon. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take that, all of the gammon joints, or a lot of the gammon joints here, the rolled ones in particular, come with this lever, layer of plastic around the outside. So I'm going to cut that off and then I'm going to pop it into the ninja tray. I'm going to leave the tray in the bottom. Uh, just to catch uh, to act as a barrier for any juices that come out or any fat that comes out so let me get it transferred across and then I'll explain how long I'm going to cook it for okay so he's now nicely settled in the ninja basket now my ninja has a roast setting right there and if I turn it to the roast it shows you it's 190 degrees I'm actually going to drop that down um, sorry that was the wrong one, to 160 degrees and I'm going to cook it for 30 minutes. That's not all of the cooking. Now this is a, just over a kilo, this uh, gammon joint. So if you were having one that was much smaller, like a 750, which is the small gammon joint, you perhaps only want to do this for 20 minutes. Still boil it for 30 and then do this part for 20 but I'm putting it in for 30 for now and then we'll see where we're at and then we'll add lots of flavour to it for the last little bit of cooking. So let's get her started. Okay, so you can see that it has now cooked through and it's looking very red because I have just started to brush all over. 
some of this Thai sweet chilli sauce. So we're having sweet chilli gammon tonight, but that could be absolutely anything that you'd like to glaze your gammon with. So it could be a brown sugar mustard glaze, that's quite common, or a honey mustard if you don't want to use just regular sugar. You could use some maple syrup to make a glaze. You could use balsamic vinegar, that makes quite a nice glaze if you mix it up well. You could use barbecue sauce, you could use ketchup, <laughs> whatever. If you look up glazes for gammon or ham um, online, you will find all sorts of options of what you can glaze with. But if I had rubbed this on or, or smothered it with this when I put it in for the 30 minutes, it would have burned. Everything on here would have burned because of the nature of an air fryer. Um, so I've only put this on now. I'm now going to put it back in. I'm going to increase the heat from 160 to 180 on air fryer setting rather than roast setting. And I'm going to let it go for another 10 minutes just to really pull that sweet chilli flavour into the gammon and give it a nice uh, finish, a nice crispy coating on the outside. And the sweet chilli, usually things that you coat gammon with have some sugar content, they have some sweetness in them. And that will catch a little bit in places, but that's just part of the beauty of, of a roast gammon. So it is looking orange because I've covered it in some bright red sweet chilli sauce, or it's looking red, but it is nicely cooked all the way through. But now it's going to have 10 minutes, so let me go pop it back in and then I'll come and show you the finished gammon. Okay, so there we go. After 10 more minutes, there she is in all her glory. It's a very strange piece of gammon because it's got this kind of ridge in the middle of it, which appeared after I actually, after I boiled it and I took the plastic off. So it's almost like two pieces of gammon there. Um, but you can see it is nicely um, browned where I've put the sweet chilli sauce on. It's got that lovely glaze to it. And if I'd put it on any sooner, where it's just started to catch on the edges there, it would have burned. And this is obviously not burned, it's just some nice little crispy bits on the outside. Inside the gammon is nice and juicy. I don't know if you can see that as the juices come out, but fully cooked all the way through. Now we're going to serve it pub style tonight, so we're going to have it with some homemade chips, some garden peas and a fried egg on each, on each plate. But you could easily have this with roasties and veg and gravy and Yorkshires or you could have it with mashed potatoes and like baked beans or peas or some kind of vegetable. Just easy to serve gammon in lots of different ways. You could have it with some salad on a nice hot day. If you're just eating salads then you could easily slice some of this off and have it in salads. The leftovers make excellent sandwiches to use up during the week or little pieces of it with an omelette or something like that. So it is a really versatile and quite cheap piece of meat. So that large, it was 1.3k, I looked on the packaging while it was cooking, cost me £6, I think it was, at uh, Aldi. That has gone up a lot, it used to be 4 99 for those large pieces and that was a set price that I paid for years for them. Um, so it has gone up a bit, but still £6 for this nice big piece of meat that will feed your family a couple of meals at least, depending on the size of your family or a meal and some leftovers for lunches and, and things like that, then you can't really go wrong with that because putting a few chips in the Ninja, especially we've got the double Ninja, so we can just put chips in the other side, cook up a few eggs and some peas or baked beans or corn or whatever your family likes, and you've got a meal that will do another meal as well, but you've got that for probably less than £10, I would say, with everything put in and easily feeds a family of four um, but probably something like this if you were just serving it for dinner then a family up to kind of six or seven depending on the children's appetites you could probably get away with that easily so thank you for joining me for this quick look at how we do a roast gammon in our ninja i hope you've enjoyed the video and if so i hope you'll consider subscribing to our channel and we look forward to seeing you back here on the seesaw soon